performances all year long, and now we have some of the best seats to see your favorite acts live and in concert. Arizona PBS Box Office presents a backstage pass to meet world-class performers. Arizona PBS Box Office presents a chance to see exciting performances before they sell out. This month, Arizona PBS Box Office presents The Man Who Took Cool to New Heights. A special evening with Tony Bennett in, in concert at Celebrity Theater, Tuesday, August 7th. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Arizona is leading the way in cutting-edge scientific research in our very own backyard. Join us on Catalyst, the show that explores new advancements, technologies, and innovations at Arizona State University that are shaping the future for tomorrow and beyond. Catalyst, Wednesday at 9, right here on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... I'm David Goldstein, owner of Biltmore Loan & Jewelry. We buy our loan on upscale assets. We have over 30 years of experience in determining values of automobiles, jewelry, art, collectibles, and antiques. For more information and appointments, BiltmoreLoan.com. Support comes from Citizens Clean Elections Commission, your source for unbiased voter information. Watch an upcoming debate and vote informed this election. Visit azcleanelections.gov slash debates for dates and ways. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Arizona's voter crisis. Fewer people heading to the polls? Why has voter participation been eroding for years? Trying to keep the peace, church leaders draw up a plan to deal with perceived police brutality. An electric report for Arizona. Sunny days are ahead when it comes to solar energy. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Victoria Valenzuela. And I'm Renee Mohammed. Thank you for joining us. As Arizona's population grows and voter turnout is on the decline, why are more people becoming apathetic to the election process? In 2016, 45% of potential voters did not cast a ballot. 2.1 million Arizonans did not exercise their right to vote. Only one in five potential voters cast ballots in the 2016 primary election. The lack of voter participation can lead to more people ignoring or not caring about key issues in our state. Reporter Emily Richardson looks at reasons why people aren't participating in democracy. The Morrison Institute for Public Policy believes there is a voter crisis, not just in Arizona, but in the entire country. The Institute believes that one of the most critical issues when addressing voter turnout is that baby boomers are more likely to cast ballots than millennials. I do think it's a crisis. I think it's important to try to bring the numbers up. And um, I just, it's, it's a very important issue. In 2017, the United States was deemed a flawed democracy in the annual Economist Intelligence Unit Democracy Index rating for the second year in a row, primarily due to the lack of citizen participation. Arizona ranks 43rd in voter turnout, and age plays a major factor in that. In 2016, half of the people who voted were 64 or older, which means the low voter turnout is largely due to the lack of young adults casting ballots. However, Paul Avalar from the Institute for Justice Arizona says this crisis did not happen overnight. It's been ongoing for decades. It says crisis, but everything in it also says it has been this way for a long time. The term crisis is being used to wake people up to the fact that this, this does need to change. Other findings in the report are that people with more education are more likely to vote. There is also a concern that more citizens are losing trust in their government. Certainly we've seen uh, distrust in government institutions increase quite a bit since the 1960s. We've seen dis uh, distrust of institutions generally across the board uh, increase quite a bit. There is no one specific reason why people aren't going to the polls, but the panelists believe that improving civic education and making registering to vote easier are two things that could help increase turnout. In the Broadcast Center, Emily Richardson, Cronkite News. Today, President Trump backtracked a bit from yesterday's news conference with Russia President Vladimir Putin. President Trump said he misspoke yesterday about Russia not being involved with the 2016 election.
felt very strongly that while Russia's actions had no impact at all on the outcome of the election, let me be totally clear in saying that, and I've said this many times, I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. President Trump went on to say that his administration is doing everything in its power to prevent Russian interference in the midterm elections. Arizona made national headlines in the 2016 election when some voters had to wait hours in line in a hot sun to cast their ballots. But Native Americans say they face a host of problems when they go to the polls and long lines are the least of them. Danny Koble in our Washington bureau was at a Senate discussion on the issue this morning. At a roundtable meeting today, Senate Democrats asked tribal leaders and voting right activists what challenges Native Americans face when they try to vote, and those advocates had plenty to say. This is not just talk. Our people have been uh, systematically denied access to fair representation in several jurisdictions. And Jackson Brossi was speaking on behalf of the Navajo Nation, but the four basic barriers he cited were echoed by all the other speakers. Problems with language, geography, jurisdiction, and discrimination. Language problems range from difficulty learning how and where to go vote to understanding what's on the ballot once they do get to the polls. Without adequate translation in the native languages on that, how can people understand what that initiative it is? For language to be an issue at the polls, Native Americans would have to get to the polls in the first place. But for many, the closest polling place may be far outside the reservation. Even for those fortunate enough to have a nearby polling place, it can still be an unwelcoming place for a Native American voter. The problem that we're seeing throughout Indian country is that it's commonplace, even if you have a polling place on tribal lands, you may go in there and all of the faces you see are non-Native faces, some of which may not be the friendliest faces that, that are going to be there to greet you. When senators pointed to mail-in ballots as an option, tribal leaders said that it provides its own set of challenges. Many of their people do not have a direct mailbox and might be discouraged from voting if they have to pay return postage, something they said the government should provide. If you're going to uh, provide for absentee ballots, uh, then you would also, uh, in that process, provide a postage paid envelope so that they could return uh, the ballot. After the roundtable, advocates said they hope Congress can make changes that will help, adding that they're only asking that a Native American voter gets what every other voter has. Make sure that um, all members of the Navajo Nation are able to vote. Um, they have access to early voting, um, and they have the same access to early voting that someone in Phoenix would have. Tribal voting issues are nothing new. New Mexico Senator Tom Udall opened today's discussion by noting that his grandfather wrote the Arizona Supreme Court opinion that secured the vote for Native Americans in Arizona 70 years ago. In Washington, Danny Coble, Cronkite News. Navajo Nation leaders think they have a potential buyer for the Navajo Generating Station, a power plant that generates a third of the Navajo Nation's budget. Navajo President Russell Begay Russell Begay, excuse me, says the tribe is negotiating with a company based out of New York. The plan is scheduled to be closed at the end of next year. Environmental groups have written a letter to the Secretary of the Interior to confirm that the plant will go dark at the end of 2019. They claim that any effort to operate the plant beyond the closing date would be subject to the provisions of the Envi National Environmental Protection Act. Former President Barack Obama made his highest profile speech since leaving the White House. Obama spoke in South Africa on what would have been the 100th birthday for Nelson Mandela. He shied away from making comments about President Trump, but did weigh in on immigration. In the West's current debate around immigration, for example, it's not wrong to insist that national borders matter. That's, you know, whether you're a citizen or not, is going to matter to a government that Laws need to be followed, that in the public realm, newcomers should make an effort to adapt to the language and customs of their new home. But that can't be an excuse for immigration policies based on race or ethnicity or religion. Where you get your news could help predict how you feel about immigration. A poll conducted by NPR asked people, are immigrants an important part of our American identity? 
52% of people said yes who prefer Fox News, 78% for those who watch CNN, and 73% for those who rely on NBC, CBS, or ABC. People smuggling marijuana into southern Arizona from Mexico can now face additional charges for crossing the border illegally. This increased penalty aligns the U.S. Attorney's Office in Arizona with President Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy. Federal prosecutors often use plea agreements to quickly resolve cases. The Arizona, the Arizona Daily Star excuse me, reported that this new policy targets several hundred people arrested in Arizona each year. Policing the community and keeping everyone safe. It's a difficult task every day for the police. But we do see reports of police brutality pop up in Arizona. Amanda Mason explains how some church leaders are working on a plan to keep everyone free from harm. I spoke with a senior pastor who claims that some people are afraid to report police misconduct. He's also aware that oftentimes the accusations are unfounded, but in some cases police brutality happens and this pastor has come up with a plan to involve reporting cases to the church. Statistics show that people in our communities, when they've been abused, if it has not been caught on video, they do not go to the police department to report it. There have been several videos released this summer accusing Mesa police of brutality. Pastor Juan Brown is now rallying his community. I'm just gonna be transparent. I felt alone. I felt vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I felt confused. I knew it was going down in my backyard. To help police the police, Pastor Brown helped create the Clergy United Against Police Brutality. It's us unifying as clergy, uh, one, to give support to our law enforcement as well as to uh, stop police brutality. By and large, we, we believe in law enforcement and we believe uh, that they're good officers, but at the same time, when these incidents of police, police brutality occur, we can feel alone and we don't know who to call, how to have our voices heard. And we as clergy and the African American community as well as the church community need to step up so that our voices can be heard. The meeting addressed a 10 point plan that includes a checklist when a person sees something that appears violent. Besides reporting it to the police, contact a church involved in Clergy United Against Police Brutality. Get the name and badge number of the officer in question date, time, and location of the incident, and any evidence such as a video or picture. We don't want anyone to suffer by themselves, um, regardless of color, regardless of creed, uh, faith, denomination, wherever it is, we want to make sure that justice is served wherever it can be served and should be served, and we want to be able to do that. Clergy members in Mesa say they plan to hold future meetings with our churches across the valley and state to possibly expand the initiative. In the Broadcast Center, Amanda Mason, Cronkite News. Phoenix is going to study its police force. Earlier this month, City Council voted to fund a six-month study that will cost nearly $150,000. The study will look at the high number of police shootings. There have already been more police shootings this year than the total number in 2017, 2016, or 2015. The Phoenix Law Enforcement Association says there are several factors to the rise. For one, the department is understaffed. The lack of border security and a growing homeless population also play a role. St. Mary's National Food Alliance is working on new ways to feed families around the valley. The United Latin American Citizens and Tyson are coming together for a special cause. Next, how these organizations were able to gather 35,000 pounds of food for various families. Plus, how the future of streaming could pollute the environment. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. 
We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon, your source for what matters most this election season. Only on Arizona PBS. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. The lack of access to adequate food is a problem that two million Arizonans are faced with every year. Each day can be a struggle when you're hungry. Gabriela Becerra reports on a partnership to help feed our community. Today, 35,000 pounds of frozen protein were donated to St. Mary's Food Bank. The food came from a partnership between the League of United Latin American Citizens and Tyson Foods. A spokesperson for St. Mary's says donations this large are hard to come by. Protein is one of the hardest things for us to get a hold of. Um, our freezers are never stocked when it comes to frozen meats. So the ability to have this on hand, it'll not only help folks in Phoenix, but we have agency partners around the state. Volunteers spent this morning packing emergency boxes filled with dry goods like cereal, pasta and canned goods. These boxes will be going to families that need help providing breakfast and lunch to their children. According to St. Mary's, one in three children in Arizona are growing up in poverty and lack access to healthy food. The volunteers came from the League of United Latin American Citizens, which is holding their national convention here in Phoenix. Gabriela Becerra, Cronkite News. Did you stream and binge the last season of, of Stranger Things? If so, you could be hurting the environment. With climate change being one of the biggest challenges we face, reporter Nia Roan found out how your stream could make an impact on global warming. Although you may recycle or bike to work whenever you can, binge watching on platforms such as Netflix or Hulu may still be hurting the environment. A recent report from Greenpeace calls on major companies to stop using to stop using companies that use dirty energy such as coal and replace it with renewable energy. I usually watch my favorite TV shows through Netflix or Hulu or things like that. Amanda Heath streams videos on both her TV and laptop and subscribes to streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. Although Grey's Anatomy is her favorite show at the moment, she may change her habit based on a new report from Greenpeace that grades streaming companies based on their carbon footprint. I had no idea that streaming Netflix and Hulu hurt the environment, but I feel like I definitely want to take different measures now that I know because I want to do anything to help. Greenpeace is a company in 40 countries that addresses the biggest threats to the planet. They released a report saying that streaming could be one of those threats. The report looks at the energy each streaming company uses and then assigns them a letter grade. YouTube was the only site to receive an A letter grade on the report because of their environmental improvement within the past year and their commitment to become 100% renewably powered. Amazon Prime received a C, HBO and Netflix both got a D, and Hulu earned the lowest grade, an F. Gary Cook, senior IT analyst for Greenpeace, says that people at home can reach out to their streaming providers to tell them to power their companies with renewable energy or threaten to take their business elsewhere. Letting companies know that you care about these issues and that you're going to use uh, your power in the marketplace to choose companies that are greener. Heath says she's not giving up her Saturday night binge watching. In fact, she's looking forward to a new season of Grey's Anatomy but she may reach out to her streaming service.
Yeah, I could see myself writing a letter to Netflix or Hulu and just explaining that it would definitely be more helpful, especially since everyone uses these platforms. When I asked Netflix and Hulu for a comment, they did not respond to the request. An updated report from Greenpeace would be released by the end of the year. In Los Angeles, I'm Nia Roanne for Cronkite News. Arizona is becoming one of the top states in the country with our use of renewable energy. Coming up next, how our state is a leader in innovation with solar energy. Right now it's 106 degrees out there, but stay tuned. I'll have your seven day forecast later on in the show. I'm Matt Barry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. If you're looking for one show that tells you what happened that day in the world of business, it's NBR. We saw a classic chip wreck. Nordstrom's opening stores. Triple digit gains. Crude climbs. We're there to help our audience find new investment ideas. The market still has room to go up. Nightly Business Report is the longest running business television program in history. Weeknights at 1030 on Arizona PBS. A new report shows Arizona is becoming a leader in renewable energy. The state has cracked the top 10 in numerous categories, including wind and electrical vehicles. Allison Snell reports how she, how the sun is really shining when it comes to solar energy. According to Environment Arizona, we're now second in the country when it comes to solar energy growth. Today, I spoke with experts on how we're getting so far ahead of other states. Uh, that Arizona is powering uh, 658,000 homes today with the amount of energy we're producing. The new study, Renewables on the Rise, looks at a decade of progress regarding Arizona taking renewable energy to the next level. Solar is growing in America by leaps and bounds. Arizona ranked second for the amount of solar energy growth that it had. Fanshawe, the solar program director for Environment Arizona, says it can't be only about the sun. We have to look at numerous ways to create renewable energy. Wind energy, how we're using less energy through energy efficiency, how more battery storage is coming online, and then how more electric vehicles are on the road. Not all of us can afford electric vehicles right now, but there are always ways we can work to help clean the air. Carpool, um, or if you have the ability to purchase an electric vehicle, um, those are the ways that would really impact um, air quality. Arizona also placed in the top 10 in electric battery storage as well as registered electric vehicles. The only state to place ahead of us in solar energy growth was California. In downtown Phoenix, Allison Snell, Cronkite News. The city of Flagstaff saw some intense monsoon activity over the weekend. Some neighborhoods saw an average of two inches of rain per hour, overwhelming much of the city's drainage system. The Coconino County Emergency Management Department has since installed a number of monitors at its office to better track flooding and other disasters. Tomorrow will mark the third day in a row for a high pollution advisory in the valley. And hopefully we can get some rain to clear the air. Jordan Daphnis is here with your weather forecast. Jordan? 
All those showers last week helped bring down our average temperatures across the state, as you can see, but it did not help out with our air quality. We do have an, an advisory going into tomorrow. Some ways that you can help is, of course, carpooling and also fueling your car at night. Now, taking a look across the valley, it's 100 degrees in Scottsdale, 102 in Glendale, and 106 in Phoenix. For our seven-day forecast, do we have rain? We may see some. There's a 20% chance today and tomorrow, but over the weekend, though we do see cloud coverage, there's a 0% percent chance of rain. Now going into next week, as you can see on Monday, it's going to going to jump back up into the low teens 115 and 114 on Tuesday. So though we have had some relief, the heat is going to turn back on later on this week. For Cronkite weather, Jordan Daphnis. For the past few years, most mortality rates have lowered in the U.S. But there's one cancer that's had a major increase in deaths. Coming up, how your lifestyle choices could increase your chances of getting liver cancer. I like working for Cronkite News because it gives us the opportunity to find a different angle on the same stories that every other news outlet is covering across Arizona. As students, we have the opportunity to cover issues in all across the state of Arizona. It gives me a good chance to sharpen my skills, improve my skills, learn the techniques in, in a newsroom and in the programs and teamwork and technology, getting me prepared for the real world. And at the same time, I think we do a great job, make some great stories, do great journalism for the city of Phoenix. and. Of Arizona. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5:30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. A new study is underway to figure out whether or not teens may be at risk of having attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, the culprit, texting and social media. Researchers from the University of Southern California performed a study on over 2,500 high school students from the LA area. The students were surveyed in 2014 and again in 2016. Students were quizzed on whether or not they experienced any of the 18 symptoms of, the ADH of ADHD six months before each survey. The U.S. Center for Disease Control released today that the death rates for liver cancer in adults has increased by 43 percent. This percentage rate increased between 2000 and 2016. It includes men and women aged 25 and older. The study also mentions that men are two and a half more times likely to be diagnosed. People who smoke, drink excessively, and have poor nutrition are susceptible to the cancer. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a new project looks to get more folks engaged in the voting process. And long-term water usage is down in Phoenix, even with population growth. It's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. The popular new way teenagers are vaping with e-cigarettes that parents and teachers may not know about. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Friendship Village Tempe, a retirement community for over 30 years, offers independent living with residency options, lifelong learning classes, as well as continuing care. Information at FriendshipVillageAZ.com. The Denture Experts, with their digital technology, strive to give you a confident and natural smile with comfortable fitting dentures or implants with no sores or odors. Information.